In this tutorial, I'll go over some of the dimensions that you need to do. You'll do your dimensioning on the Annotate tab after you've placed the views. Now, the typical ty type that we've done before is just use the Dimension tool here, and then to click one side, come over and click the other, and place that dimension. If you don't want this to keep popping up, you can turn it off by deselecting the Edit Dimension when created, and click OK. Another way to do this, however, is to use the baseline. And with the baseline, what I do is I click my starting point, and then I come over and click the next line that I want, and then I can go to the next line after that. When I'm done, right click and click continue, and then pull it up, and you can do multiple dimensions at the same time instead of having to go back and start over each time. Now another type of thing that we're going to add here is for the circles where we have holes, we're going to use a center mark. And what I do is zoom in. I can either click right in the center of that circle, or I can come over and I can click on the edge of the circle. Either way, we'll put the center marks through there. We also want to do that on uh, at least a semicircle or more. So I would place one here, and I would do one for this one as well. You'd also do it for all of the circles there and for the smokestack too. Okay, the way that that's used is to dimension distances. So I would come in and dimension that from the edge here to that center point. And so I could do it one at a time like this to the center mark and pull it down. Or I could have come in and used the baseline again and said that uh, from the back here to this center mark and then to the center mark here, right click, continue and drag those down to place them. You would do the same thing to dimension from the point here up. And we should have kept the previous dimensions, but they went away. Another item that we need is the centerline bisector. We're going to use that anywhere that we've got a hole going through. So here I have the hole that goes through for the axle. I'm going to click one side, go click the other side. Okay. Occasionally, if I click in the wrong spot, it kind of does something weird. So I'm going to undo it, try it again, and stay off of this line here to make sure that I'm getting the two lines there so that it centers up. I also want to do that anywhere that I've got a hole going partway through. So the two sides there for the hole here, same thing there. I would do it as well going this direction. and places like this in the top. Okay, another thing that we need to do is to dimension the uh, circles and arcs themselves. Use the dimension tool. I'll come in and click on the circle here. Pull it out to the um, side. Right click and OK. For an arc I want to do the same thing. So I might have like the arc here and place it. And then we also need to work on angles. So we'll go to the annotate tab again and I'll click on a line. I want to avoid the green dot. If I hit a green dot what's going to happen is it's going to dimension the distance there and I want the angle. So zoom in enough that you can avoid those click one side, click the other side, then you can pull it out and place an angle. Same thing between here and there to get those values. So you're going to want to go through the document that had all the measurements on it to create the initial train and every measurement that's on there should be somewhere on these documents.